We'll go ahead and continue with our post-race press conference for tonight's AAA Texas 500. We're now joined by the winning crew chief, Chad Knaus. This is the team's third consecutive victory in the AAA Texas 500 and fourth overall at Texas Motor Speedway. Uh, talk about your evening and then just making those calls at the end, a lot of cautions there and just the chaos that ensued. Whew, I don't even remember. How's that? It was, uh, how's the vest? It goes like that? That's nice, right? Um, it was it was difficult. It, you know, we made the call there with uh, 30 or so laps to go to stay out. You know, quite honestly, I think that was a wrong call now looking back on it. But it was a call that we made. We decided to stick with it, obviously, and uh, it, it panned out for us. It was it was difficult. There were some fast cars coming. Obviously, the 24 car, they jumped out there in front of us on that one restart. And uh, quite honestly, if that next caution hadn't come out, uh, they would have definitely won the race. Um, but Jimmy got a really good restart on that uh, that last restart. I don't know exactly what happened between Brad and Jeff. Uh, obviously, those guys got tangled up and, and got together, and there was some chaos there. But uh, we were able to, to scoot away and get going. Uh, and then on the next one, Jimmy did a great job on that restart. Got out there, was able to check out a little bit, and then I think there was more beating and banging behind us. So we were kind of ahead of that, thank goodness. What is it about <laughs> Texas racing here that, that you makes you so <laughs> successful? You know, quite honestly, I think this is one of the coolest racetracks that we go to. Uh, super, super fast, obviously. I think Tony's got the track record now for over and qualifying for over 200 miles per hour. It's ridiculous how fast we are around here. But what's so neat about it is the tires wear out, the cars are slipping and sliding. Uh, if you don't like watching racing here in Texas, you don't like watching racing. It's uh, it's just spectacular the way the guys are sliding the cars off the corners. Uh, it's it's a lot of fun. The drivers have to really be in tune with what's going on, and obviously Jimmy does a very good job of giving us feedback about what's going on with the race car, which allows us to truly truly get in there and manipulate the car and try to make it to his liking so he can get out there and feel comfortable sliding it, drifting it, and, and driving it the way that he needs to. We're going to open up for questions. Uh, Stan. <clears throat> yeah, Chad, Stan Creekmore with CompetitionPlus.com. Jimmy's already said that he feels like you all found something in the, you know, in in very recently yeah. that 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 changed his whole ability to drive this race car. I know you won't tell me what you found, but was it something you kind of maybe knew about but just didn't quite use, or? Or, or was it truly something that just suddenly popped up? You know, it's it, it's not an it's not a singular item. Obviously, uh, I wish I could say that it was. I wish we could say we had this widget and we put it in the race car. We went faster. That's not how it works. It's a it's always the way you set up a race car is a it's a culmination of a lot of ingredients. And when you put those ingredients together, it can work or it cannot work. And and we really struggled this year, as you all know. Uh, you guys have documented it often, which I appreciate. Um, <laughs> and we we, we kind of got off base a little bit. And uh, we, were, we went down to Homestead last weekend, and we really went back to what our roots were, how we work on a race car, how we want to do things, how we would typically do things 48 style. And uh, we found a little bit of speed down there. Uh, we were able to expand on that on the second day. Uh, found a little bit more speed, some more comfort, and uh, it was it was nice. It was it was a good test that we had down there. So rolling up up here, we we had some of that back. But now I don't want to want you to you guys to forget. You know, we I think we led the most laps at Talladega, and I think at Martinsville we qualified pretty well, and we were going to run up front most of the day there as well. So you know, Charlotte we ran we're going to run really well. So we've had a lot of really strong race cars, but coming into this weekend, I think there was an air of confidence that we started to develop last weekend. And look, don't don't even begin to think that our pit crew wasn't a huge contribution today. Those guys have been working very, very hard, diligent, and uh, changed the way that they practice, changed their practice mentality. And they came in today, and they just did absolutely fantastic. The best day we have ever had with a 48-car pit crew on pit road. Thank you. We'll go with Brandon, Bob, and then up to the press box. Chad, Brandon McCall, Feveling Reporter News. Um, you know, all day long, it seemed like the inside line was the one that got going hmm. quickest on the restarts. Were you surprised that Jeff chose the the outside on the, the first green-white checkered, which ultimately wound up in the, resulting in the fracas post-race? I really was. I didn't. We had got, Jeff had gotten, the reason he chose that line was because we actually had the lead uh, the previous restart. Jeff was on the outside. Jeff got the jump on us and was able to get by us and obviously uh, extended his lead and was, was in position to win the race. Uh, 
I had felt like that the inside lane was the, the proper lane, especially if you could get a good, solid restart. Uh, Jimmy and I had spoken about it leading up to this weekend and uh, felt like that that was the, the safe bet if we could get there. And, uh, and it, it, it panned, out, panned out for us right there at that point. Yeah. Bob? Uh, Bob Packer, Sporting News. I have two questions. The first, um, did you talk about fi finding a little bit at Homestead <laughs> and kind of going back to basics. As part of that, I assume you worked on 2015 stuff and maybe just kind of starting from the beginning again? I think that's probably actually that's one of the most intelligent questions you've ever asked, Bob. That was really good. <laughs> um, quite honestly, you're right. Uh, we did. We we went there with a with a different and open mindset because we showed up with the 2015 package. Uh, we began to develop our own theories and our own solutions to the problems that we had, and it was it was actually really good. Uh, we switched the second half of day two to the 2014 package and uh, a lot of the stuff that we had learned with the 2015 package actually applied. So we were able to actually draw some good conclusions and uh, apply that here for this weekend because quite honestly Texas and Homestead are very similar. Uh, people may not think that but but there is a lot of similarities with the tire wear. And I'm afraid this one might be one of the least <laughs> intelligent but you're, <laughs> if I walk around the garage this weekend your name just keeps swirling around in rumor mill. Can you say are you going to be the crew chief of the 48 next year? What are you hearing? I'm hearing you're going there. I've heard two or three different places, to tell you the truth. Man, I haven't heard any of that stuff. You guys keep all the good stuff away from me. You write all the bad stuff. You don't tell me the good stuff. No, man, I'm, I'm set. Uh, I think that uh, uh, I, don't, I don't foresee a change with the 48 car from a driver or crew chief standpoint in the near future. I don't, I don't foresee that happening. If it does, I'll have to be a reporter because I don't know what the hell I'm going to do after that. We'll go up to the press box, and then we'll come back down here. Question uh, for Chad Wolfgang Munzer from Germany, Rennsport Press Agency. Chad, you mentioned earlier this track is very fast and also mentioned very shortly the tires. Uh, how was the tire wear at Jimmy's car and how do you approach a fast track like this uh, with setup that you can run the whole distance without any tire problems? Yeah, you definitely have to be cognizant of what's going on. Uh, we were watching the tire wear. There's some elevated tire temperatures uh, throughout the course of practice, especially uh, in the early practice yesterday with the speeds up as high as they were. I think we were racing, we were practicing race laps in uh, some of the lap times that the guys were qualifying. So we really paid attention to what was going on. Tire wear was extremely high, um, but that's, that's okay. I think that that's a good thing, and I don't think anybody in the garage actually complains about that. Um, we, we like it when we have to try to tune our cars to save the tires. Uh, we feel like that that's a good thing, and we were able to, to get to work on that and, and do some things. You know, we have to obviously coach the driver to make sure that he doesn't abuse the tires. I think we saw that a couple times today. Some guys would really shoot out there, go fast, pass a bunch of cars, and then they would lose a lot of track position later on because they were too loose and they couldn't, couldn't hold their position. So uh, I know from my standpoint, watching these guys off of turn four where we were pitted on pit stall 43, Man, that was exciting. Uh, there were so many cars coming off there sideways. I'll tell you what, Ricky Stenhouse can drive a race car because that thing was sideways every lap coming off of that corner. So it was, uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, you know, this track's really, really great. Let's go to Marty and then Tom. Marty Smith, ESPN. Uh, how much has this stretch of not winning impacted your confidence personally? And how bad did you need this win? You know, it was it was difficult. Uh, obviously, I <laughs> I hate losing more than I enjoy winning. You know, and uh, obviously, going through this this stretch has been difficult. Uh, we've we've looked for answers, haven't found uh, haven't found them. We've lifted every stone to try to figure out how to get the 48 car to to run a little bit better throughout the course of the season. And I think we got blinded a little bit um, by our own just misguidance. And um, it's it was difficult. Uh, I. My confidence was definitely low. I know Jimmy's was definitely low. And, you know, look, winning cures a lot of things, but the, the proof is in how we react beyond this point, how we go to Phoenix, how we, how we produce there, how we go to Homestead, how we, ra how we race there. Uh, you know, those would be the true tale of where, where we're at. Go ahead, Tom. Hi, Chad. Tom Jensen, FoxSports.com. Yeah. <laughs> We've seen this year Roush Fenway's really fallen behind. We saw him... Um, um, uh, Joe Gibbs hasn't won since Talladega in the spring. You guys had a cold stretch. Why is it so easy for big teams with presumably brilliant guys, talented 
um, people working for them and lots of money to fall behind because there are people who are falling behind and then you come back and you know kind of put an old school ass kicking on everybody today <laughs> How, it's easy happened? to do you have to realize that you know we were talking about it the other day jimmy and i were that when when these guys go out there and when you have the, the fastest race car on the racetrack and the 25th fastest race car on the racetrack within a couple of tenths man it's it's not that difficult to to fall behind um, you know, it's it's a challenge to stay ahead of the curve in this industry. Um, you know, it's 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 hard. It's in the, it's an ever moving target. Rules change, processes change throughout the course of the year. Uh, we came into the season, we felt a little bit behind from the onset. Um, you know, I think the Gibbs guys maybe did as well. I think they were battling for the championship last year, and they lost a little bit of their edge because they weren't able to test and, and focus on the next season like some of the others did. And, you know, quite honestly, you look at the two and the 22 right now. Now, they may go to Phoenix next week and, and whip us, but they aren't as strong right now as what they were earlier in the year because the other teams have actually caught up to them a little bit. So it's a it's a challenge, man. It's a it's a sincere challenge. And, you know, one of the things that Jimmy and I know and look, I don't always do the best of the easiest way to go out there and beat people is to work together. And, uh, you know, when things get difficult, it's almost sometimes more difficult to work together. Right. Because you could isolate it. So as teams go through the season, if they are, don't have success, they end up uh, inherently starting to pull apart. And that's that's a challenge. We're now joined by tonight's winner of the AAA Texas 500, Jimmy Johnson, driving the number 48 Lowe's Red Vest Chevrolet. Uh, you're now the winning the Sprint Cup Series driver here at Texas Motor Speedway with four victories. Your third consecutive victory here in the AAA Texas 500. The sixth That's victory. what I look like? <laughs> Fantastic. That's exactly the, what I I was like, wow, the red vest. Wow. The sixth victory. And the cowboy hat. It's just <laughs> a weird. The sixth victory for Hendrick Motorsports here at Texas Motor Speedway in your 70th uh, Sprint Cup Series victory of your career. Talk about the win and then just there at the end, a lot of cautions, just the chaos that ensued. Yeah, I'm just really proud of the effort uh, to win 70 uh, cup races is just mind-blowing to me. So uh, very, very proud of, of hitting that uh, mark tonight. Um, thankful for Chad and my team and uh, very proud to have won all my races at one one race team with one sponsor. Um, and then obviously having the, the Red Vest Chevy tonight has been a lot of fun. We had a, a few chants in uh, – victory lane with the Lowe's employees that were there. I'm not sure if anybody had a chance to see it, but we go through and spell out the word Lowe's and uh, to have that camaraderie and, and fun with, uh, you know, the executives from Lowe's and then the people that work in store that we were racing for tonight and dedicating the swim to tonight. It was just, just a lot of fun. So um, we, we wanted to close out the year by having fun and winning races helps you do that. Uh, but I have to give a lot of credit to our test session in Homestead earlier this week. Uh, we, we went down there, and, and Chad and the guys um, started making me happy. I guess I've been unhappy for a while, and these guys put some great speed in the race car, got me really comfortable with the car, and we were able to bring a lot of that here and, uh, and, and get the car you know, off the truck right away. It was quick, qualified third, and then uh, dominated tonight and won the race. So uh, just proud of the effort. And as Chad said, it's tough when you're going through uh, watching you know, a championship opportunity to slip away from you. But I, and we, you guys ask me questions in here about us raising health one another on the radio. Uh, but that's part of the process. You know, that's one thing that's been good about us is we've always been able to be honest with one another and say the tough things. And uh, sure, you might not like to hear it and you might, might sting a little bit, but it's what's kept us uh, together for all these years and has provided the 70 wins and six championships. So I'm just happy to be here and, and very happy to have our speed back and look forward to these next two races. We're going to take one more question for Chad in the press box and we'll let him go. Chad, Chris, Mike, .com. Is it safe to say that you're going to take this chassis to Homestead? No. <laughs> Is that it? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> okay. Chad, congratulations. You Thank you. We'll go ahead and continue with questions for Jimmy. Raise your hand. We'll get you a mic. We'll start with Drew back here. Jimmy, Drew Davidson with the Fort Worth Star-Telegram. Can you just talk, do you think having a non-chase driver here for the second consecutive week takes anything away from the chase, or kind of how do you view that? No, I mean, um, there's a lot of good race teams, and you, we, there's always a, uh, 
you know, people that aren't mathematically eligible to win the championship, those folks always win races at the end of the year. Um, we've been on a hot streak in some years. I think we won like six out of ten chase races. But, uh, you know, other years, you know, there's plenty of other people taking the, the trophy out and max points out. It's just kind of how it, how it goes. So, um, you know, there's a lot of strong race teams in our, in our sport, and it, it's no surprise to me, for sure. Stan. Stan Creekmore with Competition Plus. Jimmy, as we talked the other day, uh, that, that next to the last caution, had nothing happened with Keselowski, was Gordon going to beat you? It seemed like there was a bunch of caution or uh, attempts at the green white. There's one where Jeff was gone, so if that's the one you're speaking of. No, the of, next one after that. What happened there? When Keselowski when, oh, when Brad got his tire. Yeah, I, I don't have a clue. Um, the inside lane had been the successful lane, and Jeff just got a really good start, the, the restart before, and got control of the race. And he chose the outside lane again, which was shocking to me because all night he had taken the bottom. And as I was trying to piece things together, um, I was trying to make sure that the 18 behind me got a good start. So I was trying to communicate to him out the side of the car to let him know when I was going so he could get a run and try to, I guess it was the two, not, not the 18, and, uh, and, and get a run and, and, and try to um, clear the 24 into turn one. Uh, because with him on my outside, going through the corner, my car was pretty uncomfortable. And frankly, I just, I just let off some and just surrendered the position. I wasn't going to take him out in the process. Um, and that's how he got by me, the one where he checked out. And then I was just trying to hold off the two the best that I could. And uh, when things changed and the 24 wasn't on my outside, there was no need to lift. And I left it flat on the floor all the way through four and just cleared him off of turn four and, and came to the white at that point. Any additional questions? Bob. <clears throat> Bob Parker, Sporting News. Chad was talking about the Homestead test and you guys finding something and kind of going back to basics. I'll ask you the same thing I asked him. Did, the fact that you kind of started in 2015 mode, did, do you think that kind of helped kind of um, the learning process? Yeah, I, I, I think so. Um, you know, the 2015 package, the way it sits, it, what, what I felt with the power out, and even though there is some downforce taken out of the car, um, you still carry a lot of throttle. Um, I'm hopeful that in 16 we can take more downforce out. Um, your effort and the way you drive the car was very similar to what you have in the 14 package, but just at a slower pace. And, you know, there weren't, weren't many cars in 15 form, so we were kind of on our own little island, pretty calm, relaxed. Uh, atmosphere and just working through stuff and um, you know definitely hit on some things so I, I don't I mean, maybe the calm environment um, of being in 15 form helped and uh, once we got rolling in 15 form I mean I was hurting people's feelings in 14 configuration and pulling away from them out there with low horsepower so we knew once we got our car into the 14 configuration on day two that uh, we'd be pretty quick and that that happened too so um, yeah, I, I think being in 15 form down there helped us. Tom. Hi, Jimmy. Tom Jensen, FoxSports.com. Congratulations on the victory. Thank you. Um, you said when you were in here for your media availability that you are okay with this point system because it's what fans want. Do you think fans want to see fights after races? And do you think the way the aggression Keslowski is showing is really going to hurt him down the road with his fellow drivers? I need to see what happened with the two. Um, based on Jeff's frustration, I would assume that it was pretty aggressive and, and uh, Jeff just doesn't go crazy like that and chase people down around and, and after a race. But um, it can, you know, I think, I don't know, it's kind of a catch-22. And again, I need to see it because when, when your only opportunity to advance is to win, you know, he had a bad race in Martinsville. He's got to do all he can to win. So, you know, the, the system is breeding this, and it was by design. I think Brian France sat back and looked long and hard at this and was hopeful that these moments would happen. Um, you know, it's, it's changing the way things take place on the track. And when I think back to when I started, 
you know, we'd point people by, let them go. There was this gentleman agreement on the racetrack. You, everybody told you to study Mark Martin and watch how he lets people go and works with people. That stuff hadn't happened in years. I mean, we'll cut each other's throat any chance we get. So, I mean, it, the, it's just trending that way. Um, we'll see what it means for the future for Brad. Um, I, I feel like on track, he does uh, does a good job. I think he gets himself in more trouble off the track with things that he says, personally. Um, so we'll see how things proceed from here and, and how he handles all that. Uh, what was the first part of the question? Uh, what, fans what fans want. I don't know. I sat in here and made those comments earlier and then watched my timeline fill up with people telling me that I had it all wrong. And, uh, you know, from a diehard fan standpoint, I don't believe that's what fans want to see. But confident that tomorrow will be on the front cover of every paper and we're trending on all the social stuff and um, heck you might even make it on the today show or some of the other mainstream television shows because there was the fight and there was crashing and all of that. and that's unfortunately what leads to those big headlines and that, that's kind of the point i was trying to make all along and i don't know what the right answer is um you know tonight um I hope people tuned in to watch, but you, you just you just never know. But again, I, I, my comments come from a place of caring for our sport, and I want our sport to be viewed, and I want fans in the grandstands. And at the end of the day, that's if I make a comment in here that somebody agrees with me or doesn't, all I care about is our sport being successful, and and uh, you know trusting Brian France and the executives at NASCAR to take us down that road. Joey. Joey Barnes, Tribute Racing. Uh, Jimmy, I want to get your thoughts towards the end of that race when uh, you reflected back to saying Jeff had set sail ultimately and had control of the race, being on fresher tires. Knowing that he's in the chase, uh, last Hendrick car standing, fighting for this championship, where do you stand whenever you're – what are your thoughts whenever you're behind him knowing that this race is drawing to a close? Yeah, I tried to um, give him plenty of room today. Um, didn't race him like I did the other competitors on the track. Um, a couple times he was in the outside lane. I left him a hole to get down in the inside lane so he wouldn't get freight trained. Uh, the restart where he got by me, uh, I, I didn't run the corner flat. He was you know, on my outside and my car wasn't real comfortable and I would have been an idiot to leave it flat. And if the car got away from me and took him out, it would have, would have been pretty bad. But uh, the flip to that one, the two was on my outside through three and four. I mean, I didn't have anything to lose and it wasn't the 24. So I left it on the floor and, and made it, you know, and, and it stuck. So... You know, you pull back a little bit and just try to protect and uh, just try not to cross the line. And that's our job as a driver is to, to walk the fine line. And I just made sure that I had a little little distance between me and the line and didn't do anything stupid to the 24. Yep. Any other questions? Jimmy, thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you.